and ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel this is your boy fly island guy welcome aboard today we are back in beautiful bahamas um it's been a while actually since i've been here but uh if you've been following my previous videos if you know if i'm in the bahamas right now that means i've finished my hawaiian ops tour and uh we're going to be heading over to south america but before we go there uh i got a comment in a few videos ago uh shout out to ym creo 242 brooks i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly and he asked hey do a flight to marijuana again and i said no i'm not gonna do that why would i do that <laughs> just joking i said uh, I, I decided of course i'll do that now i did a flight to marijuana as you saw he said again so i did a flight a long long time ago uh in the bn2 islanders so we're gonna try it again now in the atr and uh things are gonna be a little interesting so let's get into the flight deck and go from there All right, so uh, we've been going through our checklist, trying to get everything up and running, but before uh, we continue that, I just wanted to talk about what's interesting about this approach. Now, uh, if you saw my previous video, I'll just link that in the comment below. There is, oh, this airport, Meguana, from, from Meguana is uncontrolled. So I'm just trying to bring up Navigrav charts here. Uh, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So, here's Navigraph charts. We have MYMM, Meguana. And if you come in here to look at charts, as you can see, everything is empty. So there are no published approaches, no airport information, uh, nothing about this airport. But all I have really is my knowledge of flying there before. <laughs> so uh, what I'm gonna do is I have the flight plan here. I've just been stepping through to make sure everything is all good. Uh, let me just clear this disk on real quick. And execute. So disk continuity is cleared. So what's gonna happen is between Bini and Meguana, there is a seven, well, 78 nautical miles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plan my descent uh, so that we end up probably about, I don't know, five, five nautical miles from the airport, uh, maybe 10 to give myself a little more, a little more uh, leeway. And then we'll, we'll kind of do a visual approach from there onto runway 06. Even if I come inside here, as I said, no approaches, can't choose any runways, can't do anything. But yeah, that is where we are currently. Um, but I've continued, yeah, the, the flight plan is done. Uh, so have all of our V speeds here. We're a little bit heavier today than normal transition is 18,000 feet. Nice long runway here in Rock Sound, Luther. Uh, and uh, there's a pretty good sized runway over in Meaguana as well. Uh, just not much else to the airport. So I'm not, I don't have any worries about landing the, the ATI here. Uh, we should be good to go. I'm actually kind of curious as to why there's still a big leg here missing in this flight plan. So pretty sure I cleared it and then hit save. Maybe not. Executes. Okay, that's better. Oh, I hit the undo button. That's why. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think everything else here is good. Um, this is our approach page. I will fill this. You can fill this out a little later, but right now, just put in the destination runway. Or well, maybe. We shouldn't do this now. I don't know. Okay, it's not allowing me to put that stuff in. So I think it should have been filled out already. Uh, not a big deal, though. All right, so that is all done. 
Um, also, fun fact, if you didn't know about this, because it took me forever to realize it, is uh, this screen is clickable. So if you just want to get back to the regular view, you just go ahead and you can click. You can click like this side of the screen. I think these different parts of the screen have different click points. Uh, yeah, you can just leave it how it is. All right, uh, the next thing we'll do is just double check the weather real quick on routes. Uh, so windy.com is my go-to. There's probably not going to be anything there for uh, Meguana specifically. But, I mean, if we just take a look here overall at the, the weather picture, they have it on rain and thunder. And as you can see, not a cloud in the sky once again. So here we are in the, the southern end of Eleuther, and we're going to be heading out to Mayaguana, which is out here, which looks like it's pretty much well, one of the, the last group, well, one of the last set of islands here in the Bahamas. Um, it's actually amazing how huge an area the Bahamas is in. Like, all the, the how huge an area Bahamas takes up. It's pretty, pretty impressive. All right, so we're going to continue our checklist uh, right up to kind of getting everything started. So we've already completed the uh, MCD setup. Um, so what I will do is uh, just set the runway heading, which for Rock Sound, we're departing runway 9. So it's 096. So just going to get that done. Zero. Oh my gosh, it's gonna mine. Zero nine six. Boom. Good to go. And then back to our checklist. Uh, we can go ahead and get uh, our navigation set up. So we have LNAV, VNAV set up and good to go let's check our source it should be fms1 get that there and yeah it's good to go uh we're gonna do 160 knot climb out um so once we get in the air we'll, we'll get that going uh, flight preparation checklist complete. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll actually just get the aircraft started. We're not going to do hotel, hotel blah, started. We're not going to do hotel mode today. We're just going to go uh, straight and get the engines started up. So we're going to go and close up our passenger door. That's all shut. And uh, we'll go ahead and get our beacon switched on. And we'll go to start A. We'll go ahead and start with uh, engine two first. So we'll give it a start. Hits 10% NH, we'll feed it fuel. And let's see if it spins. There we go. All right. So we'll wait for it to stabilize. All righty. So that engine start looks good. Uh, we'll go ahead and start engine one now. So come back up. 
And we can go ahead, start the engine one button. I actually realized I kind of missed a checklist, but uh, we could do this after the engines are started. So that's looking good. Feed fuel to that guy as well. Now we'll just take a look at the left side, make sure that end is running. Yes, it is. And to start, watch your head. <laughs> just start, it's looking good. All right. Okay, so both engines are stabilized. We'll go ahead and look up top, get our starter off. Uh, before we actually uh, move the engine conditioning up to auto, we'll do the before, before propeller rotation checklist again. Um, just to get that done, I should have done that ahead of time. It's okay. Get the wheel chocks off. I'll disconnect our ground power once we get the engines uh, up to auto. And uh, let's check our takeoff config. Let's see. There we go. Uh, confirm takeoff data. Uh, set our trim. I believe it's 1.7. Yep. And that yep, beacon's already on. That's fine. All right. So now that we've got the engine started, uh, we can go and put both engines in auto. And I can go ahead and disconnect the disconnect the uh, external power because we don't need that anymore. Actually, it's already disconnected. Oh, good. Okay. We don't need it anymore. I guess because the engine started. We have both engines started now, so I guess we don't don't need it anymore. For some reason it's not letting me get rid of it, which is sort of odd. Yeah. Well, it's all right. Why am I moving? Okay, that was odd. Okay. Uh. We actually forgot the fuel pumps as well. Just interesting how the engines were able to start without it. But uh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So now we have the engines running. Uh, we switched our starter off. Condition levels are set to auto. Uh, start switches are off. <clears throat> we'll get our probe heating on. And. Flaps to 15, and I think that is it as far as that's concerned. Okay, so taxi checklist, uh, taxi takeoff lights on, and your damper is engaged. Uh, sorry, not your damper. Uh, taxi takeoff lights on park and brake and go ahead and release it and we'll do a quick brake check yeah brakes are working and we can do the gust lock off which is this guy We're just doing that takeoff config again real quick. Yeah, everything looks good. Alrighty, folks, uh, we are ready to get out of here. I'm gonna taxi to runway nine, which I think is running uh, this way.
Alrighty, so an amazing shout out to everybody who's who is watching this. Um, fun fact: today is actually my birthday, <laughs> so um, I'm just kicking it at home today. Figured I'd get a flight in while it's, it's nice and quiet inside here. Uh, and then I'm gonna go meet up with my family once this is all done. But yeah, really happy to be kind of getting uh, flights done regularly now. Uh, I'm trying to aim for one video a week. So that is gonna be my aim moving forward. I'm gonna have to taxi all the way to the end of the runway. As well, this is a third party scenery uh, for a Luther. And um, I know, I think this is by uh, Art Pool. I use his, his uh, all his sceneries for Bahamas. Um, and they're all pretty good, although they, they seem a bit dated, like it looks like they were just kind of ported over from F FSX but uh, it's still really good. And it does bring the Bahamas to life. So I'm definitely not, not mad at that. Gonna check our performance data. V1 speed is 108, V2 108. We're a little heavier than normal but not, uh, not too heavy, which is good. So this is not a little far off center. Yeah, this is not a, a, an on-air flight. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this uh, just for that, that request that was made. Local time right now is 12.33. This is a midday flight. Uh, flying time is one hour, and we're going to be cruising at 19,000 feet. So we're just going to set our cruising altitude once we get to the end of the runway here. Actually, forgot to do forgot to do that as well. It's all right. But as mentioned before, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather here in the Bahamas. Um, and I've kind of been really lucky to, for the most part, have fairly good weather until, you know, while I get the hang of flying the ATR. All right. Okay, so here we are, our runway is 09, all lined up. Uh, we will just set our... We'll set our... Uh, our altitude real quick. So, here we go, uh, 19,000. There we go. All right, and that is it, I believe. All right, we're ready to go, folks. Let's get out of here. Let me get uh, this. Let's do F1. Oh, one. There we go. Here we go, folks. Uh, 
All right, trying to stay center. 100 and rotate. Gear up. I'm just going to drop the nose a little bit so you can get the speed up. Just trying to follow the flight director. I will go climb power. Getting more back on profile. Let's just do the autopilot so you can let go of the controls. <laughs> Flaps up and let's take a look outside, folks. I absolutely love, 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 love the views of the Bahamas. to change our views they're a little a little wonky right now let me know what you guys think though do you prefer like a view like this or do you want to see a view that's more like outside the aircraft um i prefer sort of looking out the window because it looks a little more real but uh if you guys prefer something else that's all good too All right, so I'm gonna set uh, 160 as our climb out speed because I think that's the profile we had set in uh, sim brief. And make sure we're going up to 19,000 instead of 18,000. So the plan, as I said, is once you reach this beanie waypoint, that's where we're going to start our descent. So what I actually do is I'll use my precision descent calculator, which is something that I actually, I, I use a lot, especially when I'm not, uh, when I'm not using like a, a aircraft that has fancy fancy avionics so yeah it's this guy here really simple website and I just like to use it because it, it makes things really simple for me so I know right now that I am I have set 78 nautical miles from Beanie to the airport so what I'm gonna do is I want to do I'm going to come down with about 10 nautical miles left before I land. So I'm going to do 68 nautical miles. And we're coming in, we're coming out from 19,000 feet. And in general, I like to do about, let's say 1,700 feet. I'd say about 15 to 1,700 is where I see a lot of the uh, final approach fixes when, when it coming into an airport. So let's set uh, 1,700 feet is what we're aiming for. 68 nautical miles and we could descend at about uh, 200 knots and that gives me 1100 feet per minute so when I hit the beanie waypoint I'll start my descent and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go at 1100 feet per minute I'm gonna try and do about 200 knots and that should get me about roughly 10 nautical miles away from the airport and then there I will visually make the approach all right so I know that uh, runway six is sort of, it's sort of like opposite of the direction that we're going in. Uh, so if we look at the, at the rows, at the compass rows, runway six is kind of going out this way, right? And we're, we're gonna be approaching from that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to try and move a little south of the airport 
and then kind of turn back and come on to runway six. So it might be a little a little tricky in this aircraft uh, because it's this isn't a BN2 island. This sounds a little bigger, but uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm not gonna talk too much about Mayaguana because we have been there before, but I'll link the other video for you guys to take a look at and. Uh, yeah, make sure to check that out. It'll be in the description box below. But in the meantime, uh, I will be back when we're starting our descent into Mayaguana. And uh, let's see how things go, folks. ATR power. <laughs> we'll check it out. All right. I'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've started our descent into Mayaguana. Uh, we are about uh, 16 nautical miles from the airport. Um, it should be straight ahead of us. And not much to report in terms of the approach today. We're just going to be landing on runway 6. Uh, if you can see by the, the compass rows here, uh, runway 6 is kind of back in the other direction. So we are... <laughs> We're sort of heading towards the airport, and we're gonna have to make like a right, a right turn, then circle back, and come in to land on on runway six. Let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, descent checklist. We've already set the local altimeter. Um, landing lights are on. Seatbelt notify signs are on. Captain pressure checked. Anti icing. We don't need it. Uh, and for the localizer, we don't have for the approach side. We don't have to worry about the localizer. Um, don't have to worry about anti-icing. Approach mode, uh, we don't need it. This is going to be a visual approach. And uh, not pulling out our flaps yet, but we shall do that uh, very very soon. mentioned the airport is going to be straight ahead now once I kind of get a little bit of a visual of where the airport is supposed to be um, then I think I'll start uh, prepping for landing but what we will do because right now we're descending to 1,700 feet, which we're hitting about now. So actually, I will do... I'll slow down. And uh, we're going to hit our flap extension speed now. We're just crossing it. And we'll do... Flaps 15. And this is just to slow things down just a little bit. Still trying to keep an eye out for the airport. We're going to probably have to get pretty close to it for me to actually spot it properly because I'm not very familiar with this area, so not 100% sure where the airport is. gonna keep an eye on my speed though. Uh it will do. We'll go into heading mode. Cause we should be very very near. And I'm actually going to Kind of vector in a way, so we're going to be kind of heading past it. So, airport now should be more off to our left. I think this might be it here.
Yeah, I think that's it right there. That's it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go to flap sturdy and gear down. All right. So this should be the runway. This is the runway here. So we're going to make a right turn. We're pretty much now at 1700 feet. And I'm gonna try and stay visually on the airport. Flaps full. And in fact, I think at this point, I'm uh, just going to go manual. All right. So, I'm going to start our turn back towards the airport now. And I can see it right there, off to our left. I'm gonna be looking at about 103 knots for approach, but I always tend to come in just a little faster. So that's it. Right there. All right. All right, so we have gear done. I'm gonna go back to Take off thrust, but uh, yeah. There you go. Your damper could come off, getting a little low. And we're just setting ourselves up for a pretty good approach here. And I'm pretty low right now, but it's kind of tough to judge things. So let's keep our fingers crossed, folks. This will be a, a decent approach coming in. Here we go. Check. Set the minimums for about 300 feet. Check. Minimum, 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 minimum. Continuing. Right, we're a little right to the runway now. All right, now we're looking good. Check. Warning. 
100. Check. 50, 50, 40, 40, 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10. Come on. Oh, I bounced it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Maguana. <laughs> was not. Uh, oh, man, that was rougher than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so we're gonna turn around right here. Got down in one piece, so you know that's a chain. <laughs> Local time is about uh, 1:45 p.m. We'll just taxi in on one engine. So we got down, uh, which was good. I was hoping for a smoother landing and honestly still haven't gotten the hang of the... It might be because I'm coming in like a little fast too, but the, uh, it's very, it's something weird happens with the nose. When you land, it's kind of, I find it kind of hard to control, but you know, small things. Alrighty, so I think the terminal was here at the end of the runway. Oh, terminal, quote unquote. It's not much of anything, to be honest. <laughs> Alright, switch the landing lights off. Beautiful. All right, so we're just taxiing in on one engine, basically. And uh, this field looks weird. Depth of field is odd. So I always like to hear from people that are local to the area who've been here, just to find out like how accurate is the um, how accurate is the scenery here. All right. So got our marshal who's guiding us in. the engines beacon can come off and uh, over here we'll actually get the external power on and then from there we'll cut the engines Wheel chocks can come on, we can open our doors. And that is it, folks. All right, so that was a uh, sit in the cockpit and do extra checks <laughs> type landing. Uh, definitely aren't gonna be going to see the people on that one. So it was a little, a little bit on the rough side, <laughs> but we got down, folks. Hope that you can go, you guys enjoyed the flight. Uh, this is kind of a more interesting one because the 
yeah, Meaguana isn't, uh, it's not really, it doesn't have any instrument approaches, so you basically have to fly the whole thing visually, so, um, found it a little tough to do in the ATR, but, uh, it's all good. Basically because you don't have a lot of time to, to really think and, like, uh, take your time with it like you would in a small aircraft. But anyways, folks, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you see fit. Uh, this is your boy Flyland Guy. I will catch you on the next one. Stay safe. And most importantly, stay fly. I'm out. Peace.